So hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Elias and it's a pleasure to introduce to you our venture UNCAP. With UNCAP, we are on a mission to provide innovative, automated and unbiased funding to thousands of entrepreneurs in Africa. For early stage SMEs in emerging markets, it's extremely hard to raise capital to grow their business. And I know I'm talking in front of a very knowledgeable audience in that regard, but I still want to stress that issue. Access to funding is not only unequally distributed, but it's also highly biased with regard to gender, educational background, location, or also personal relations. And I'm also not telling you anything new when I mention the missing middle funding gap. There is a massive shortage of early stage investments in Africa and economic unattractiveness and the limitations to scale such small tickets further hamper the access to, the, to this funding. So we are creating um, a new approach to funding early stage entrepreneurs at the lower end of the missing middle with tickets between 10 to 50,000 US dollars. We were wondering why everyone wants to invest in the most innovative startups, even in Africa, but the way we invest, the process itself has been largely untouched by any innovation. The current way is expensive, it's exhaustive for the founders and clearly failing not only minority groups, but whole regions. To be able to invest in this growth, we decided to rethink the old school way of investing. There are three parts in which we like to talk about our platform that makes this happen. It's the select part, invest and manage part. And I want to dive into each of those. So first the select part. To be able to conduct due diligence on thousands of applicants, we focus on what truly matters. For us, that's the founder. Instead of historic data that might further reinforce existing inequalities, we built an algorithm that measures entrepreneurial potential to predict future success of businesses. This happens completely automated without any personal touch points to the entrepreneurs, and we therefore reduce bias as much as possible. We also track behavioral KPIs in the process to assess commitment and fraud potential. In the invest part, entrepreneurs re receive a standardized automated offer through the platform and can receive funding within days in case they are prepared for what we expect. And making sure that they know what we expect, we also educate entrepreneurs throughout the whole process with webinars to make sure really everyone knows what they get themselves into. We are in this process utilizing existing KYC and KYD procedures and also money transfer solutions to make the process fast and secure. In the managed part, we focus primarily on behavioral economics instead of complex and above all expensive controlling. We receive real-time accounting data through a connection to the business's online accounting systems. Our platform provides entrepreneurs then with a transparent and independent track record for future funding rounds. They also receive support through automated analysis of financial health indicators and access to resources, training programs, and accelerators. Like, and yeah, it's basically like a virtual coaching program. But the entrepreneurs are, and that is very important to us, in the driver's seat to decide how to run and scale their business. For all of that, the financial instrument we use to make this happen is revenue based financing. The great thing about it is that there is no dependency on IPA, IPOs or um, expensive valuations. It adapts to the company's growth as the repurchasing progress is in line with your revenue growth, which you see illustrated here also in the graph. And on top of that, it's also suitable for companies that are growing organically over time. Those that are at the core um, of representing our target group. So far, we have paid out 27 um, investments in a pilot round and are currently cl um, close to another round of up to 50 investments. Those investments are completely sector agnostic and we have so far been able to have 20% female founders in the portfolio. And that doesn't sound much, but as a short background for that, this is actually also the ratio of female to male founders that applied for our funding at Uncap. So this is a promising early indicator.
we are actually taking bias out of the application process quite well. But now for the current round, we could already attract way more female founders and hope to continue this trend in the future. 27 investments are, of course, not enough to help close the missing middle at scale. But we are just getting started. By the end of 2022, we are investing in up to 300 entrepreneurs. And by 2030, we want to reach 50,000 entrepreneurs. To reach this goal, the policy dialogue that could emerge from this competition would be super valuable for, for us from different perspectives. To just name a few examples, data transparency in the due diligence process, when we talk about KYB, for example, is super crucial for us. And when we talk about the portfolio management, running cross-border intercontinental transfers is still a massive hurdle. Um, and we would love to work on those issues together with you in a joint effort. Not only uh, the current 27 uh, entrepreneurs in our portfolio, but every good founder should have access to our funding offer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elias. That was spot on six minutes. And thank you so much for the interesting presentation. So I yield the floor to the judges for questions and reactions. Kristen, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I'll try one. Um, hi, Elias. Hi, uh, Kristen. I, I mean, the, these people, are these people, how, how are you only dealing with selection bias using your your application? You're you're not going uh, on site and check on the projects. Never. No, it's a completely and, remote process. Yeah. Okay, and these these people are these people receiving the money through a local bank, probably. We are using, I mean, we're using different means, um, probably also part of a regulatory uh, issue. Um, we so far mainly use TransferWise um, um, that are yeah, spread across uh, different regions. So that worked quite well so far, at least in the regions that we are active in. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for the question, Christian. Uh, I see Giselle, you have your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the great presentation. I see it's a crowd landing, if I can call it that way. I, I just would like to know if, uh, in how many countries uh, is your product working and is it regulated? If you can share the name of your, those countries. And uh, the, the other question is related to the, uh, the SMEs not being able to repay the funds received. How do you uh, how do you address that, that issue? Thank you. Thank you for the questions. So I'll start with the second one: um, SMEs not being able to transfer the funds. Um, so we have dealt with this, this issue in the beginning already. Um, we started off with um, a pilot portfolio that was really rather a test portfolio, where we also had idea stage companies in it. Um, now to to also make use of our funding model revenue-based financing, we demand a certain track record um, of, of revenues. So we can be sure that those entrepreneurs and they con connect their accounting system during the due, due diligence. So we can yeah, kind of have insights into their financials and see that they have made revenues. And so, the, so we just reduce the risk uh, for them defaulting. Um, but of course, in a, in a venture capital investment, basically, um, it might happen that that business is still default. Um, the first question is which countries were active? Um, that is, we also started out being completely open in Sub-Saharan Africa, we, but we had to quickly realize that um, that's not going to happen due to regulatory issues we face also with, with the model we use. And we are now focusing on um, four countries, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, and Nigeria with the aim to expand that to other countries in the future. And hopefully you can help us with that. Thank you so much, Giselle, for those questions. I see Nasser, your hand is up. Yeah, hi. Well, I mean, I just, I want, I would like to know a couple of things about, firstly, where, what is your source of capital? Secondly, then on the interest rate side, what, 
are you, what is a sort of typical range of interest or maybe a better metric might be an IRR for you on the investments you're making? And what is the cap at which you stop um, taking um, an interest in the royalties or the revenues of the firm? Yeah. Um, so um, the, um, let, let's start with the IRR question. Um, so far, uh, we are in a single digit range, but we uh, aim for like make, getting in a commercial range. Um, this is also, um, I mean, we started out uh, with, with a test portfolio as well. Um, the, the contract is completely standardized. Um, so everyone get, gets exactly the same contract depending on, um, so we have a multiple cap um, at 3x and they repay 5% of their revenues over time X. And uh, we have a scale in there. So depending on how fast they, they manage to, to, to repurchase the shares basically that we buy in their companies, um, you, you, get a, you get a lower multiple. And then it's capped at three X. Um, and we, like, we assume that it, uh, that it may, might take up to 10 years, but it might also take longer for some entrepreneurs. Okay, so total return, um, ignoring inflation, could be up to 300% for you on the invested amount, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, Th thank you so much, Nasser, and, and thank you so much, Leas, for, for taking us through your wonderful product. And uh, I wish you all the best as well.